So in general, there really is not much explicability with respect to artificial neural networks. We just can't explain much, right? Now, I think I've been sort of cheekily avoiding this, but what do I mean by an explanation in terms of artificial neural networks? So in the colloquial sense, you probably know what explanation is, right? If I say, oh, what explains you bring an umbrella today? You might say, well, the explanation is because it's raining outside, right? That's some explanation. But when it comes to artificial network, neural networks, what do we mean? Well, it really depends. So in some cases, we actually do want some technical explanation, maybe the weighting that's at hand, or maybe if it's a decision tree, we want the path that it took to arrive at a certain outcome. So suppose you have some tree and you, know, you can venture off into different paths. And perhaps this is the path that it took. You would want to know. That's some explanation. But often these explanations are partial. They don't give you all of the picture. They just say one little tidbit. I mean, we'll do more examples later, but it's really important to know that these explanations are really lacking. They're very partial. It's like, I mean, sometimes it's not even immediately clear. So let's say I ask you, oh, why did you bring an umbrella today? And then you might say, you know, because I checked the weather or something. I mean, that's some explanation, maybe because you checked the weather, you realized it was raining, so you decided to bring an umbrella today. But it's really, first of all, doesn't do much work to explain your bringing an umbrella, only, it only does some very minor work. And a lot of the times it's not very helpful. So that's what I kind of mean by a partial explanation. Now, I want to take a note aside and talk about explanations more generally. So here's a very rough definition. In fact, I know it's wrong. Uh, funnily enough, it's wrong because it's both at the same time too general and also too narrow. But take a look. Explanations are purported facts of the world that attempt to elucidate why or how a certain event happened, or merely that the event happened. So do you see the distinction between this, this bit, and this bit? So the latter, you're not really given an explanation that explains how or why something occurred but you give an explanation that would say that the event occurred or increase the probability that the event occurred or something like that. In fact, there's a lot of science, a lot of philosophical debate on this kind of stuff. Okay, so here is a picture. We have two parts. We've got, we have what's called the explanand, which is what does the explaining. So this is like, oh, I, uh, you know, it is, raining outside and we have the explanandum which is what is to be explained something like that you brought an umbrella today these are technical terms you don't have to know this but the idea here is you have some explanands and that through a process of explanation explains the explanandum. Now, in the context of AI, what the explanandum might be is an, uh, an output. Say, reject CV322 or something, right? And you want some explanands for this explanandum. Well, if it's an artificial neural network, then there's very little to say, and it's very difficult to get an explanation. 
Yes, we have a question. Yes. So in an AI scenario, to what extent we should consider data animation as computation? Good. Okay. So we had a very good question. So let me try to paraphrase it for the class because not everyone could hear that. But if I got your question right, you were asking, look, in colloquial context, we give explanations all the time there is a clear understanding of what's a good explanation or what's a sufficient explanation and what's not. For example, if I ask you, oh, why did you bring an umbrella today? You said, oh, because I had breakfast at McDonald's. Well, we would think that's a bad explanation or insufficient explanation or irrelevant. Now, in the context of AI, one might ask, okay, what makes it a sufficient relevant or a good explanation? And I think this question is harder to answer, not because there's a difference in principle, but because there's a lot of technicality involved. So suppose we have the explanandum, reject CV322. Well, what kind of explanation might we want? Well, suppose we have some decision tree instead of some artificial neural network. One explanation we might give is this look you know we had an input and then it you know ventured off here and then blah 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 and this is really complex right there might be even three three branches or four branches but anyways it happened to take this specific path at this juncture it decided to go this way at this juncture it decided to go this way right and then we can give some kind of story much like a ordinary causal story we would use to explain why perhaps the billiard ball moved this way on the pool table, right? It got struck and then it moved this way, so on and so forth. We might similarly, similarly offer some genealogical or some causal story as to why there was an output that was reject CV322. As for whether or not that's sufficient, it's, it's hard to say. It really depends on your explanation, sorry, your model of explanation. And that's a philosophy of science thing. But perhaps to simplify it somewhat, you want there to be relevance, you want there to be appropriate support. So maybe citing the decision tree is relevant. But if you were citing something else, like for example, what your aunt ate yesterday to being an explanation for the output reject CV322, then that's totally irrelevant. Okay, cool. Good question. Okay, um, at this point, are there any other questions? So we talked about explanations, explaining explanandums. Okay, I think related somewhat to the question is there seems to be some implicitness as to what sort of explanations one is seeking. Right, so suppose you have some explanandum, you know, output 322, sorry, reject CV322. There's some implicitness about what kind of explanation you want, right? Implicitness about the level of detail, about the domain. So here's an example. When you want, when you have a biological explanandum, you tend to have a biological explanation, right? So here's a question. Why did his heart stop beating? The explanandum is that his heart stopped beating. Well, we can offer an explanation here, can't we? We can offer a biological one. So we can say, oh, okay, um, you know, he ingested this chemical and, uh, you know, this had some certain reaction and his, stop, his heart stopped beating, something like that, right? Or, you know, something more grim, uh, you know, he was walking around in town and what happened was somebody ran up to him and stabbed him. And when the knife enters the heart, st structures are being destroyed, 
and the heart can no longer beat, something like that, right? But we can offer really mundane physical or chemical explanation. We might say, okay, atom X in his body did this, atom Y did this, atom Z did this, and so on and so forth. Right, so you can offer some you know, quantum level or physical explanation as to why his heart stopped beating. But it's implicit that that's not the explanation that you want. You don't care about these atoms. I mean, these atoms, of course, do explain, or the behavior of these atoms do explain why his heart stopped beating. But you kind of want a biological explanation here. Right? Does everybody get that? So if I ask you why you're hungry, you might say, ah, oh, I didn't have breakfast. But you wouldn't say, ah, oh, you know, in the epithelial lining of my intestine, it's behaved and it's this way. And then in this other part of my body, it's this way. Right? That's not the explanation that we want. I mean, that would explain it. If we had really good knowledge of biology or chemistry, that would explain it. But that's not what we normally want. Okay. The point so far is, look, explanations can really come in a variety of forms, right? And it can differ in many dimensions, namely what sort of domain it's in, what sort of level of detail, whether it's coarse grain, whether it's fine grained, so on and so forth. Sometimes it can be partial. It might not be the big picture. Suppose, you know, you have the full explanation is this, but perhaps you're offering a partial explanation. More about explanations. Sometimes these explanations are causal stories. All right. The billiard ball moved from point A to point B because uh, there was a cause, namely somebody, you know, uh, somebody made another ball bump into it or something. Uh, sometimes they're statistical explanations. It's called the statistical relevance model. The idea is not you're trying to explain some how or why question, but maybe some probability uh, raising. So, you know, uh, event A raised the probability of event B in such a way as to be statistically relevant and hence an explanation. I mean, this, this kind of stuff is controversial, but quantum mechanics seems to justify it quite a bit. And I think actually evolution. Now, given that there's so much variety in explanations, AI is really no ex exception. We do want explanation, but there's a lot of variety in what kind of explanation we can give, right? But in general, we do want as many as possible. But sometimes we might have to settle for a specific form, specific type or specific, specific part of an explanation. Okay, let's talk a bit more about some technical stuff and then we'll move on to some ethics. So, right, there is a practical conundrum. AI tends to be very low in explicability and we want to improve it. How can we do that? Well, one thing is, look, just don't use artificial neural networks. Use other tech like decision trees. But the idea here, at least people say, is there's some kind of trade-off. If you increase explicability, you decrease accuracy or effectiveness. So if you choose to use decision trees rather than neural networks, yes, you get a bit more explicability, but your system is crap. Right? That's a trade-off. However, if you want more accuracy, then you have to give up explicability. That's sort of the going idea now. I don't know if that's true. But there are other ways around that you can develop certain technologies. There's something called RISE. I forgot what it stands for. But let's take our previous example of decks of numbered cards. What RISE does is post hoc. So suppose you input some image into the system and it outputs and it says 
three to zero point nine and eight to zero point one. Right, eight kind of looks like three sometimes. What ROIS does is then it outputs this kind of heat map for the image. So it gives you this. The system gives you this output: zero point nine being three, zero point one being eight. But it also tells you, look, in coming up with my decision, I realized that these areas were most important, something like that, all right? It might say, so it will give you like a heat map signature. It will overlay some kind of topogra uh, topographical heat map signature over that image. And it will say, look, these are the parts of the image that we thought was most important for coming out with the output. So why did I highlight this part? Well, the image originally was like this and it had a bunch of empty space here, right? The empty space was here. Well, that empty space is really important because it helps you differentiate from say an eight. So the RAI system says, look, What's most important for coming out of our decision was this region here. And it makes sense because the system by looking at that region realized that, look, if, if this has some pixels, but this doesn't, then we can process it as an eight rather than a three. So it's kind of some like, you know, importance heat signature generator. I mean, is that an explanation? That seems useless. I mean, it's something, right? It's better than nothing. That's really, uh, I mean, RISE is really specific to image classification. In some medical contexts, it might be more useful. Instead of just outputting, okay, condition Y, condition Z, it might say condition Y, and this is the area that we thought was most important. It really is a technological model. So we can do these sorts of things, just add on subsystems, increase explicability a bit. But I mean, that's pretty low level. You know, it doesn't say, oh, well, you know, I reasoned as follows, X, Y, therefore Z. It doesn't do that, it just gives you a map. Okay. So I've spoken a lot and I want to do some discussions soon. I want to really bring out some of the ethics here. What sort of ethics? Well, first of all, we have to think explicability, is it important? In what context is it important? And what would happen if we abandon explicability given that it's so hard to achieve? However, of course, I did give you some reason to believe that we do have some capacity to increase explicability, namely through choosing other AI systems and perhaps RISE. Indeed, this kind of effort is called explainable AI or XAI. That is their projects called XAI that try to increase explicability by developing systems such as RISE. Okay.